Well, howdy there, everyone. Welcome on into VG Emporium, video game music and more. I'm your host, Rage Cage, and today um, I got a variety pack here for you. And this variety pack is made up of tracks from the Nintendo DS. And so the, the reason for this is because I never owned a DS. Um, I was a PSP guy, or boy, I should say. And um, yeah, I never like actually properly got to play one. Um, I've only ever played it like through emulation and trying out some of the big ones, you know, like uh, Phoenix Wright, Professor Layton, some uh, Pokemon Heart Gold, and uh, I think what is that, Mega Man ZX, among a few others. Um, you know, you can imagine it was very awkward to do it with the mouse pad and the keys and all, but uh, you know, it worked. But the one thing I did learn, uh, you know, playing these games and over the course of listening to many VGM podcasts is that uh, the music on the DS is pretty impressive. So I've decided to remedy this lack of DS in my life to uh, by bringing in uh, some music from the DS, and I'm gonna hopefully be uh, stocking the shelves with it, more of it in the future. Probably really good potential for more uh, really cool shop themes, as uh, SNK vs. Capcom Card Battle DS proved. So now with uh, this variety pack, um, I'm not gonna get too in depth about like the games and the composers. Um, there will be a section where I'll be getting into the uh, sound hardware because that's pretty interesting. So um, so yeah, getting into the music. The song we opened up with was opening from Saga 3, Jiku no Hasha, Shadow or Light. And the music was originally composed by Ryuji Sasai and arranged by Kenji Ito. And this here is a remake of the Game Boy game, uh, Saga 3, or as we know here in the States, Final Fantasy Legends 3. And so the plot of this game is that you're, uh, you play as four time travelers sent from the future to the past to stop a great flood, and they must do so by going to different time periods with their time machine to get different parts for the said time machine to then be able to stop this flood. Um, make sense of that as you will. Now, for those of you that may be wondering, what is Saga? Um, it is a series by Squaresoft, and it sits alongside Lavana series as being like kind of like the lesser series to Final Fantasy. And the things that set it apart from Final Fantasy are, are pretty big. Um, you know, non-linear story. Uh, you get to choose like which characters you can play as. Um, the leveling system is vastly different. Like, you know, instead of experience points, you uh, basically level up your stats depending on how you battle or take damage or actions and stuff. So, like, you, know, you can level up your HP, your sword skill, your MP, or, like, a defense depending on how much damage you take, I think. You know, it's, it's kind of weird how it works. So, now, getting into the music, um, as I mentioned before, Ryuji Sasai originally composed the music for the original Saga 3, and uh, this is the first soundtrack he did for Squaresoft, and then after that he would do, you know, Final Fantasy uh, Mystic Quest, Treasure of Rudra was one of the many composers involved with Tobol Number no. One and then uh, Bushido Blade Two. But before joining Square, he worked with another company called Micro Cabin, which is very relevant to an episode that I am currently putting together. So um, I'll leave it at that. And so this brings us to Kenji Ito, who arranged this music for this remake, and uh, he brought it to more in line with uh, kind of the sound of like Romancing Saga, which he worked on all three of those games as well as Saga Frontier and then so uh, Romancing Saga Minstrel Song. And so if anybody's familiar with the uh, Final Fantasy Mystic Quest soundtrack, you know that that is a pretty mixed bag as far as, like, you know, musical styles, and this here is no different, um, excepting with better instrumentation. And, uh, it's a pretty interesting fusion of styles, you know, with Ryuji Sasai's, like, um, kind of, like, bombastic style of music with, uh, Kenji Ito's interesting compositional style is, uh, yeah, I like it. So now, coming up next in our variety pack is, uh, something that's, you know, you would see on shelves and bargain bins and all over the place and you would never get. This is a 1001 Touch Games, and the track is called TR2, The Composer is Unknown. Thank you. 
and that was TR2 from 1001 Touch Games, Composer Unknown. Though I'm hoping to remedy that because I was not expecting to find a demo tune within a DS game, much less one of those, you know, thousands and thousands of puns, the same game within the cartridge type games and the entire soundtrack is like this just demo tunes and it's not the only one um, I, you know, I decided to go down the rabbit hole and look up you know the company that made this game and they had a few other sound games that they worked on and a couple of them also have demo tunes and then I found the company that published it and so I looked them up and they have a couple games that also have demo tunes and so I uh, I, I may this may be another episode of the future just like I don't know it's just why how why is it why is this awesome music on this weird little collection of Useless games, I don't get it. Well, that's a little bit of a fib uh, because I did look up this company and uh, they are based in Germany, which does have a pretty strong demo scene presence. So let's see, the games that this song is used in is probably plenty, but the few that I saw in the long play I just watched, um, there is Balloon and Arrows, Carnival Ducks, and Bill's Burgers. You know, this is a fairly okay um, demo style tune. Um, you know, it does what it needs to do and you know, has nice little things in there, like the little trilly arps going on and the kind of like the s little sine wave lead that kind of comes in every once in a while. Eh, you know, it's okay. But if you really need something to get you going, then the next track I got here is just a thing for you. Up next in this variety pack is The Radio World from Mega Man Star Force 3, composed by Yoshino Aoki. That was Radio World or Wave World from Mega Man Star Force 3, composed by Yoshina Aoki. And boy howdy do I tell ya, I feel like a fool for sleeping on this soundtrack. Um, I did play and enjoy all of the uh, Mega Man Battle Network series, and I you know, got them as they came out, and the soundtracks I hold dear. And I did play a little bit of both Star Force 1 and 2 via DS emulator, but you know, I didn't really get too deep, and you know, I've listened to the music of those a bit, but um, never touched 3, and uh, you know, I've, I was aware of its music, it sounded good, but I've never actually let myself dive into it. I don't know why, and it took uh, some prodding from a uh, listener, Crazy Goji, to finally just look into it and do something with it. And this is kind of what partly inspired doing this DS episode, because again, I am not too familiar with the music from the DS, and I really need to get myself in there. You know, it was really hard to choose a track to play in this episode because they're all so good, but um, you know, decided to go with the Radio World theme because you know you can never fail with the themes of both the Cyber World and or Radio World in case of this game. So this is not the first time I played music from any of the Star Force games. Nope, that would be episode 49, the Mega Man 35th Anniversary Mega Mix, where I basically just played a song from every single mainline Mega Man game. And the track choices I made on that one are a little out of the ordinary, so if you enjoy the tunes of the Blue Bomber, definitely go check that out. 
So as I said, I played a little bit of the first two Star Force games via emulation, and I just couldn't quite get into them. Like the story wasn't as strong as the original, you know, Mega Man Battle Network series, and the battle system, you know, it's like you know you're behind the character and you're only able to move back and forth like by three squares, as opposed to having like the nine by nine grid you can move around in the original series. So I couldn't get quite behind it. <laughs> so now Yoshina Aoki, um, she was one of my honorable mentions in last year's Masters of EGM, so I got to talk about her there, so if you want to know more, go check that out. But some of the highlights are Breath of Fire 3 and 4, Mega Man Battle Network 2, 3, and 6, Half Minute Hero, contributed music to Final Fantasy 15 and the other, like, DLC, and her latest credit is Resident Evil 4 Remaster in 2023. Alright, so next in the pack here we got, uh, let's see, Hagemashi 2, coming from the game Kabushiki Bye Bye Trainer, Kabutori next. Uh, composer is unknown. You just heard Hagimashi 2 from Kabushiki Bye Bye Trainer Kabutore Next, Composer Unknown. So now this here is an interesting little thing. Uh, what this is, is a stock simulation game from Kojima Production. And if that bit's hard to believe, um, it may be harder to believe that this is actually a sequel to Kabushiki Bye Bye Trainer Kabutore. And from what little I've saw in this game, it's basically, I think you just pick the character, and then you just manage stocks while interacting with other characters. So the first one is a standard two-screen game where you have, like, you know, the top screen showing all the stuff, and then the bottom one where you manage all your stuff. And, but the second one, this one next, um, is actually one of the ones where you flip your DS over, and so it's all vertical. So that's kind of neat. Um, one other cool thing is that all the characters are, um, like, these low-poly models, so, um, and they animate very well. It's, uh... You know, the DS is very surprising in that. Another surprising thing about the DS is just how well the uh, the sound processor handles, like, you know, s plug string instruments, such as, like, you know, the guitar in this track. Um, I've heard a few other things, like in Phoenix Wright and uh, Professor Layton, where just the, yeah, just the guitar sounds are just, like, really nice and clean, and I think this may be a good spot to talk about the uh, DS's sound processor. So, the sound chip it uses is called the Mitsumi MM3205B. So yes, the music of the DS it can be considered chiptune. So what this chip was capable of was 16 channels of PCM. So you could either do 8-bit, which was what the GBA used for its samples, 16-bit, which is the, you know, best quality, or AC PCM, which is kind of the in-between. Whichever sample quality is used, it is run through a stereo mixer, which then the stereo data is then run through a WRAM, which is then fed into the subprocessor, the ARM7, for any post-pro effects such as reverb. So the majority of the DS music is done through feeding sequence data and sample data into the sound chip, though it is capable of streaming audio. So you, instead of like running sequence data, you can actually stream like a, you know, MP3-ish quality 
music through it, though it takes up a lot of more processing power. A good example of this is the opening theme from Professor Layton and the Curious Village. So another neat thing this chip can do is turn its last six channels into a PSG mode, so it can produce either a pulse wave or a custom wave, like how like the Game Boy or uh, PC Engine can do. So much like how the music on the Game Boy Advance was a mix of using the uh, you know the DMG you know for like the pulse and the wave and the noise, and then using its uh, direct sound for the samples, the DS will do the same. So uh, good examples are Phoenix Wright and Mega Man Star Force. Speaking of Game Boy Advance, um, the DS of course could play. Game Boy Advance games. I had a slot in there for it. Um, who'd have thunk it? Nintendo did it three times in a row. You know, the Game Boy to the Game Boy Advance, and then the Game Boy Advance to the DS. So you'd imagine they'd be able to use this, uh, you know, newfangled sound chip to, you know, replicate the sounds of the Game Boy Advance, you know, with its sample channels and its uh, ability to do PSG. But no, they actually put in the, a separate sound unit for the Game Boy Advance because the Mitsumi um, is definitely not compatible with what, how the Game Boy Advance did things because, like, you know, too much, too high quality of both the samples and the uh, PSG. So this separate sound unit replicates the square wave and noise channel of the Game Boy sound chip and then the direct sound of the Game Boy Advance. So whenever you play your favorite GBA game on a DS, you'll get that nice, warm, fuzzy distortion on those samples. Oh, yes siree. So one last little neat detail here for you is that the Nintendo DS's sample and sequence data has been exported into a format called .2SF, you know, 2 for a dual, and SF for sound format. So think the .NSF or Nintendo sound format for the uh, NES Famicom, .PSF for PlayStation sound format, you get the idea. So when, uh, when I run through a player that is specifically made to play the .2SF format, um, the one that I use is Modizer once more, that keeps coming up. Um, it, it'll show all the channels, so all 16 channels, but instead of like, you know, these sequences and samples staying within one channel, they actually kind of dance all over the place. So like, you know, so say like the guitar sample here, it could be playing in like channel one, and then the next note will play in channel five, and then channel three, and then channel 16. It just depends, uh, I don't know, it's, I, I don't quite know what it's called. I want to say it's like dynamic channel something rather, but... You know, I, I I don't know that much going that far. All I know is that it makes it a pain if I want to solo in on like a certain part, but like, you know, I solo one channel and then it just like, you know, guitar, drum, bass, guitar, flute, accordion, drum, like it just it, it don't stay in place. Ah, especially if you want to cover it and you want to just get these things, you got to listen to the whole thing and just kind of discern like each part. Yeah, and the, you know, the .psf and .ssf or, you know, Saturn sound format does this as well. And I think that's enough info dumping here. Um, I think it's time to switch things up. Something a little bit more um, bizarre here. So uh, we got Lester Sprawl's theme from Contact, composed by Masafumi Takada.
And that was Lester Sprawl's theme from Contact, composed by Masafumi Takada. And this here is a strange game. Um, this is one of the ones that I actually dabbled with a little bit in Emulator, and um, yeah, it's, uh, the bottom screen is like where the main game takes place. Like, you know, it's this really cool kind of like almost pre-rendered looking kind of sprite style. And then the top screen is this more uh, flatter, like 8-bit looking style where like you're basically in the spaceship with the professor and he actually refers to you in the like, you know, breaking the fourth wall, like talking to you. You're like a character in the game. As far as I understand it. So uh, the main reason I, I wanted to play this game in the first place was because um, this is made by the same company that made Color 7, which I loved, um, which is Grasshopper Manufacturer. Um, though this game is not directed by Guichi Suda, this was actually directed by Akira Ueda, who is a former designer for Square, and um, he has stated for this game that he wanted to uh, incorporate all the functionalities of the DS. He wanted to make them work for the story in a way that you really wouldn't notice that they were there, as opposed to making them, like, you know, dictate the story, so, you know, not being front and center and just saying, Hey, look at me, ain't I a neat gimmick? Now, to be totally honest, um, the game itself, like, didn't really quite grab me the way I was hoping it would, but uh, what did was the music, which is like, you know, of course, Masafumi Takada, he he can't fail. And uh, yeah, the you know, the music's all over the place, um, you know, to weird bizarro stuff like this, to more standard RPG fare, to stuff that sounds like, you know, uh, quote, you know, quote unquote retro for the time, uh, for like kind of like the uh, upper screen spaceship parts. But now jumping back to Masafumi Takada, um, I actually talked about him recently in episode 77, Killer7. So if you want to know more about him, definitely go check that out. And, you know, if you want to know more about Killer7, check that out. It's, you know, not comprehensive, but, you know, I, I love that game. And I hope, uh, you know, I feel like I shared that love in that episode. But um, also, I featured him as one of my honorable mentions on Masters of EGM last year. So, you know, go check that out as well. And, yeah. Uh, most people probably are familiar with him nowadays for his work on the Danganronpa series, as well as the Earth Defense Force series. So now this song here, um, I think my favorite bit is like, you know, this that weird glunky slap bass that he's using. It's kind of almost as like it's peaking or kind of like clipping, but it's just the way how it sounds. And then it has like this weird kind of flamenco vibe, you know, with that flute going on. So whoever this Lester Sprawl guy is, he must be a weirdo to have a theme like this. So now, uh, jumping into something that may be a little bit more familiar, uh, we're gonna play something from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Explorers of Time and Darkness. The song is called Temporal Tower, and it was composed by Arata Iyoshi, Hideki Sakamoto, Kaisuke Ito, Kenichi Saito, and or Yoshihiro Maeda.
that was Temporal Tower from Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time and Darkness, composed by Arata Iyoshi, Hideki Sakamoto, Keisuke Ito, Kenichi Saito, and or Yoshihiro Maeda. And just damn, this song goes into so many places in my head for me. Um, you know, the beginning sounds like something that could very well fit into a front mission gun hazard, especially leaning on the uh, Yasunori Mitsuda and Masashi Hamauzu side. But then it gets into this part that sounds like it could be a Pokemon game, and then it just kicks into the spot right here with these strings and organ sample going on. It sounds like something that could have been done by Hiroki Kikura. And the thing that surprised me the most is that this is not a special case for this OST. Like the entire, it was just really hard to pick a track because I was thoroughly surprised at how good it was. Um, you know, being a Pokemon game, I was expecting it to be, you know, of course, your usual Pokemon fair. You know, it's kind of doesn't really do much for me past like, you know, gold and silver. But um, yeah. Um, I've got to explore these, uh, Mystery Dungeons Pokemon games soundtracks. So now I just gotta give kudos to these composers for just doing an amazing job of the soundtrack. Um, I'm not gonna get into their details here, this is not the episode for it. Um, I may, I'm gonna definitely be featuring music from this game in the future, possibly the other ones. And, uh, I'll do it then, but for now... I'm gonna tell you a bit, the, what little I know of this game is, uh, you know, the base thing is that you're playing as Pokemon that can speak English and they are exploring dungeons, and when you encounter other Pokemon in there and fight them, you're still doing it turn-based, and you've got to clear the dungeon at, at a certain number of turns or movements or something, I'm not quite sure. It just looks like that not even Pokemon can escape the influence of Rogue. No siree. And you know what else we can't escape? Breakout clones, in the form of Arkanoid, DS Audio Planet. The next track we got is Only Nearby Peace, Game Chu BGM, composed by Takafumi Wada. Like an Avalon. Like an 
and that was Only Nearby Peace, Game 2 BGM, from Arkanoid DS. And I'll note here that Audio Planet was the name of the official soundtrack, um, and this was composed by Takafumi Wada, with guitar samples provided by Satoshi Izumi. And with each track, I'm feeling more and more the fool for sleeping as much as I have on DS VGM. Ah yes, Lichen Oven Law. Very serious business. And this track here is very serious business, like, what? What is this? What is this glitchy techno beat doing inside an Arkanoid game? What? What is going on here? I unfortunately don't have the answers to that for you, but uh, what I can tell you is a bit about Takafumi Wada. Um, he has gotten to start with Neo Geo, with uh, you know games on the Neo Geo Pocket, such as Puzzle Link 2, uh, Big Bang Pro Wrestling, and SNK Gal Fighters. And some of his more latest credits are Paper Mario, The Origami King, Triangle Strategy, and Fire Emblem Engage. So now this brings us to the last track I have in this pack. Um, and this is a surprise find as far as like the composer goes. Um, this is To the Labyrinth from the game Deep Labyrinth, composed by Yasunori Mitsuda.
was from To the Labyrinth, from Deep Labyrinth, composed by Yasunori Mitsuda. So I'll admit here that um, I was picking some of these by random, you know, I was just going through Cage Insider and, um, yeah, just kind of going through by the letters and everything, and uh, I just saw this. The cover looked kind of interesting, so I decided to check it out and was not expecting to find, uh, you know, this, this guy in here. And you can't deny because of that slight pitch bend on the flute as it comes in, that that's Yasunori Mitsuda. Ain't no doubts up in here. You know, this totally sounds like something that could have been like an unused track in Chrono Cross. Like, you know, just even like the sample quality. Because um, as you could probably tell, this is like that middle ground, that ACPCM. In fact, this entire OST sounds like it could have very well fit into Chrono Cross. Um, you know, maybe not as strong on the Celtic influences, but you know, it's, you know, the sound, it, it fits. So now this game is a bit interesting because it is uh, originally started out as a mobile game in Japan and it is billed as the first 3D RPG for mobile phones, and then eventually got a port to the Nintendo DS. So the original mobile version was actually like pretty well received because you know it looked amazing for a mobile phone game in 2004, but the DS version uh, wasn't received so well because uh, the, I guess the gameplay was a little clunky because of the touch controls. It's probably one of those cases of you know forcing the you know the console's gimmicks on you as opposed to making them like kind of work with you. Um, you know, like how Contact did, so like, you know, the, all the sword play is done by touchscreen, all the spells are cast by touchscreen, and, um, in order to advance the story at some points, you either have to blow or scream into the mic. Ain't that fun. I'm gonna tell on myself here, I'm reading all this off of Wikipedia, and just the fact that it actually states that the player must blow or scream to in order to advance the story is just kind of hilarious there, now ain't it? Um, so let's circle back to Yasunori Mitsuda. Um, I don't really think I need to talk too much about this guy because, you know, he is, uh, you know, one of the true masters of EGM. You know, he's someone that really deserves that title. You know, but the fact that his first true solo music project being Chrono Trigger and, like, the work that he did on that, just madness. But some little fun facts for you here is that um, before he did that, he worked on sound programming and sound effects for games for Square, such as Hanjuku Hiro! Ah! Sakayo! Hanjuku Nare! Sorry, I, I couldn't resist. Um, he also did sound effects for Final Fantasy V, Secret of Mana, and Romancing Saga 2. And these were all in 92 and 93, and now jumping all the way to 2023, his uh, latest credits are Sea of Stars and Inazuma 11 Victory Road. And that's it. Uh, we've gone through the variety pack. Um, I'm glad I ordered it in. Um, I hope you did too. And uh, definitely expect more DS music in the future. Um, yeah, I'm going to be diving a little bit more into that because, uh, yeah, I've been kind of steeping myself a little bit too much into, like, you know, the FM stuff, like, you know, the Japanese PCs, like, you know, Sharp X68K, PC98, whatnot. So I've got to bring myself a little bit more current, you know, like uh, mid, mid to late aughts, something like that, yeah? Joking aside, um, you know, thank you for coming into VG Emporium. Uh, if this is your first time in... Welcome. Um, you can, of course, find VG Emporium on all your favorite podcatchers such as Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, um, Stitcher no more because I think that's gone away. And then, of course, on Twitter and Instagram. And there's the main website, vgemporium.wordpress.com, where you'll find all the episodes, show notes, track listings, as well as links to all the different like you know podcatchers and such, and Discord if you're interested in that. And hey, there's also the email, vgemporium at gmail.com, where you can send in uh, feedback, suggestions, or special orders, which are basically, you know, song requests. And once I get enough of those, I'll make their own dedicated episode. So now, unlike last week, where I had no idea what I was going to be doing this week, um, I know what I'm going to be doing next week, as well as the following week. Um, next week, I have a guest on. It is Bedroth of BG Mania, formerly of VGM Very Good Music Podcast. And we're going to be talking about original music by VGM composers. And then next week, we're going to be diving into more FM with uh, talking about the YM2413, also known as the OPLL. So I hope those are enough to tempt you to come back into VG Emporium, video game music, and more. Thank you.